Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. This is my only update for today. Going to be on the road setting up equipment here in Southwest Florida. So this will be the only video update. Um, later on, we will be live on YouTube. I don't know exactly when we're going to start, but uh, we'll be live for the duration of this important event. So this is the September 27th, Tuesday, the 27th update. We're going to talk about impacts, impacts, impacts. Not so much about the models. I don't think I have any of the model graphics up because we're beyond that. Now we are looking at where this is mo most likely to make landfall, who is going to be impacted, and it's pretty much going to be all of Florida with the exception of the panhandle in terms of direct impacts. And it's going to be a good deal of the southeast United States. This is going to be a hurricane that will be remembered for a very long time. I mean, even that satellite picture there is part of the title card. You need to realize that is with the center still over Cuba, and it looks that impressive. This is a very dangerous situation setting up for southwest Florida, and it is time to treat it as such. All right, radar animation is how we'll start things off. This is from Dr. Mark Nissenbaum over at Florida State University, and you can see there's the center very well organized now, even as it passed over western Cuba. Some of those reflectivities there I will pause it at the very end. Look at that, those yellows showing up, intense convection in the eye wall, and that is from the Key West radar over here, many, 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 many miles away. So as it gets closer, it'll be more defined. It is moving over very warm water temperatures. Well, it did, it's moving over land right now, but it's going to move over the water temperatures up in this area, assuming it takes a track like this. This is just an example. Uh, let's just use this blue color. That'll help to kind of make things a little bit more clear in terms of where it could end up. So somewhere in here, right? And those water temperatures throughout this area, 30 degrees Celsius, that one pocket there, very warm. We're talking mid to upper 80s, if not even warmer than that. Some of these oranges in here are even warmer. And so top winds were uh, when I last check, as of the uh, 8 a.m. intermediate advisory, 125 miles per hour. This is almost a shoe-in to become a Category 4, and it is going to be uh, just unbelievably bad in terms of the storm surge where this makes landfall, the rainfall that is going to be dumped. We're talking potentially more than two feet in some areas. And then the duration of this, unlike Charlie, this is not going to zip in and out. Over the course of a few hours, we are talking about a couple of days of impacts, massive power outages, just complete misery for a lot of people down here. And, uh, I mean, it, it, it's going to hype itself. That's This is the one. This is the one where it needs to be hyped up that you've got something very bad coming your way. And I'm going to talk about those impacts a little bit more here as we progress. Uh, satellite animation here, the first morning visible shots or what we call the true color. Again, very impressive considering that it is still, you know, 90% over land. It is starting to move out over the Gulf now. This thing right here, this round circle, that is the central dense overcast. The core is located almost in the middle. You've got impressive upper level outflow where the air is getting evacuated out of the system very efficiently. And that allows that energy to just keep on going, the heat engine to keep on going. Up here, there's drier air and more shear. The air would be moving too fast, and it would tear this apart. Unfortunately, it looks like Ian will end up taking the more southern track so that it ends up somewhere up here. I'm just going to use this blue color, uh, maybe from Tampa south towards Port Charlotte or Fort Myers. We don't know for sure. And when I say it, that is the center of circulation. That whole thing is headed your way. And that's what you need to understand. Very bad conditions exist in that whole thing. It's already raining over parts of Florida. You know what? Let me just go back real quick to Dr. Nissenbaum's uh, radar animation. And I'll show you that. It's already raining over a good deal of South Florida. And some of these squalls through here are rather nasty themselves. There is the risk of tornadoes, especially in this right front quadrant area of the hurricane as it moves forward. This area, some of these cells could produce tornadoes as they come on 
and rotate onto the coast. So a tremendous amount of hazards coming associated with Ian, and people need to be ready. Take it seriously. Get out if you're told to do so by local officials is for your own good. Don't try to second guess it. Don't try to, you know, well, Charlie didn't do this or Irma didn't do that. This is Ian, and Ian is going to definitely make a name for itself. It's already doing so, and we still have a couple of days, if not more, to deal with this. Speaking of that, here is the track map, and it is forecast to become a Category 4, and it could be a very strong Category 4. The current official forecast makes landfall with this system on the southern portion of Tampa Bay. This is our interactive map off the Hurricane Track Insider site, and this shows you where the center would be. But remember, it is not a tiny little circle with a three in it. The eye would probably be about this size, something like that. That's my guess. And then your area of influence beyond that would more than likely cover a very large area, something like this, uh, with tropical storm force winds. The hurricane force winds would be near the center. I'm approximating here, just saying it is not a tiny little area. And wherever you have onshore flow to the right of where this makes landfall, try to draw as best uh, sort of a right angle here as I can. This area right in here would receive the highest storm surge in that eye wall from, from where there is onshore flow, where the wind is blowing right onto the shore, that perpendicular. And in this case, it's not perpendicular. Obviously, it's coming in at an angle. But wherever that is funneled right on shore, you're going to have huge problems. And if this tracks just a little bit more to the north, and you push that tremendous amount of water up into Tampa Bay, it'll be legendary, very bad. We just need that to not happen. Um, I mean, as it is now, Sarasota and areas near that area could be devastated by some of this storm surge. We'll take a look at what that could be in just a minute. Zooming in further, Port Charlotte, there's the center up there. Do not think, well, I'm good. I'm going to hang out because it's supposed to go well to my northwest. Again, I want you to ask yourself and just remember, what is it? When you say it, you're talking about that line and the little three, the circle with the three in it. You're still going to experience storm surge and potentially hurricane force wind. Uh, so even though the center may cross northwest of Port Charlotte, and that's no guarantee, this is just from the, the, um, the main advisory at 5 a.m. this morning, that contains the track information, that's going to change at 11 a.m. And it'll probably shift a little bit more south, to be honest with you. That is my guess. Um, so Venice, Inglewood, Sarasota, all the areas in between, even inland, um, Arcadia, over to Orlando, Lakeland, Ocala, the villages, it's all of Central Florida. And then on the East Coast, this is going to be very problematic as well not just because it's going to track that way, but because it is a large hurricane and it's going to have that onshore flow coming in from the uh, combination of a strong high to the north and the very intense low here to the south. I'll show you that in just a moment as well on some of the impact graphics here from the National Hurricane Center. So again, the ADM Intermediate Advisory, as we call it, pressure down to 950. It strengthened over land, knocking on the door of Category 4. Okay, so here are all the different graphics. Um, the arrival time of winds, just want to look at that real quick. By Tuesday evening here, um, the earliest onset looks like it would be occurring across portions of southwest Florida. And then into the day tomorrow, it just expands north from there. And then you can see some of these winds could make their way all the way up into the Carolinas. This is not just a Florida problem. We have to really understand that. And that is highlighted the best here in the experimental product from the Hurricane Center there, seeing how well this is interpreted and digested by the public. It's a new product, so it's experimental, uh, among other reasons why they call it experimental. The peak surge forecast, the red, are our worst areas. And this is what I was talking about. Five to ten feet in the Charlotte Harbor area, even if the center makes landfall somewhere up here. You understand that? It doesn't have to come over you to give you big problems. And that is the same over here. Two to four feet 
on the northeast part of the Florida coastline into the St. Johns River, right in here. And then that also includes southeastern, uh, the southern part of Georgia, okay? And then, of course, the storm surge could impact areas all the way up to and including uh, Cedar Key around towards, as it shows here, the Osceola River, St. Mark's is up here, and then all the way over potentially to Indian Pass with impacts occurring first down in the Keys. So this is going to be a huge system. Uh, and in fact, I can show you on our interactive map, I'll talk about what this means and how you can see this in just a moment. We already have cameras set up. This is down in Key West. Perfect timing is a big wave just jumped in there. This is one of our cameras. We set this up last night um, working with our colleague Marcel from Miami area, Boca Raton. He went out there and set this up. Look at that. This is just going to get worse uh, throughout the day. And this is what I'm talking about. The impacts are already occurring um, all the way up here to Jacksonville. This is one of our supporters, Michael. Uh, this is going to be rocking and rolling, these trees up here, in the coming uh, two to three days because Ian is going to impact a huge chunk of Florida. We're talking millions of people here, uh, as I'm showing you here on some of these graphics. I also want to talk about rainfall. This is just, I mean, seriously, 15 to 20 inches of rain in the purplish area. The red is 10 to 15, so more than a foot in a lot of locations, and even 6 to 10 all the way up to where I live, Wilmington, North Carolina. I want you to look at this, the rest of you that are outside of Florida. Look at that map. Now, this is not exactly what's going to happen. This is kind of like a worst-case scenario quantitative precipitation forecast. It's kind of like if you add it all up, this is what the worst case could be. And the model guidance is suggesting from the yellow, let's just go yellow, all the way down to that pinkish color, and we're talking anywhere on the minimum side, four inches and as much as 20 plus, especially down in Florida. Why? This is going to be very slow moving. It is a very large overall hurricane. It's not a little small one like Charlie was. And it is going to be tracking all around the area, like I said, slowly. And it's going to have plenty of time to dump that heavy rain. So this is going to be massively problematic. And I hate to say it. But as it meanders and gets up here, it's going to hinder any restoration progress by a day or so. It's going to take a little longer because all of the help is going to be coming down from the north. And it's not going to be possible with any ease because Ian will be affecting the areas to the north where all of the power trucks and all of the restoration companies are coming from. Yes, a lot of them pre-stage but a lot more will be coming in later. That is something very important to keep in mind. If you are with one of those companies, you're not going to be able to just jump on the sunny highway wherever you are coming out of Atlanta, coming out of Charlotte or Columbia, South Carolina, or whatever the case may be. Ian will have been milling around and still in the area of the southeast. I mean, just real quick, looking back at the track map, it speaks for itself. All of this area will be impacted by Ian I-95, I-10, and I-75 are going to be difficult to deal with just from heavy rain and maybe even some downed trees. So just keep that in mind as well. Just a whole basket of good news this morning, huh? Sometimes that is the way it goes. Um, I want to talk about our project here. This is very important. We do this not for the thrill of it. It is not some extreme sport that we think is uh, you know, just something to go out and do for the sake of doing it. It's not a hobby. It's my job. I have a tremendous amount of support from uh, all over the world. I've been doing this for 30 years. And this project here, the Hurricane Landfall Project, I'll put a link to this PDF, got it working today. Yesterday, it was I couldn't get it to upload. It was annoying. But it's there now, so I'll put a link in the description of the video so you can read all about it. This is what we do. I educate you on the front end, tell you what's happening, give you my perspective, and then we go out and we set up this equipment over a large area covering hundreds of miles. These are just some examples here. And it is all supported, not only from the money, but the actual equipment itself. Everything you see in these pictures, in any pictures that I tweet today, uh, showing what we have been setting up, all of the equipment was donated through crowdfunding and crowdsourcing, and we do it through Patreon. 
It is a, a wonderful way to support projects just like this. So you go to patreon.com slash hurricane track. It's right there. And you can join up, help us out, become a part of our community. We are very active here on Discord, as you can see. Um, it connects up through your Discord. Uh, if you have Discord, if you don't, it's fairly easy to integrate. And uh, we do have a good support team if you are running into any problems with that. It takes some getting used to with all these different channels within the server. But it's pretty amazing what we can do with Discord. You can share information with us your own pictures, your own video, and I can post updates exclusively into Discord. This is all part of our Patreon, uh, our crowdfunding way of supporting this. If you are interested in doing so, that is exactly how you do it. In fact, this is what the page would look like when you go there to sign up. Uh, the $4 level, the $10 level, or whatever is best for you. 25 or I think the hundreds are all sold out. Yep, they're all sold out. And... Um, it's just a really remarkable way to make this happen, and it helps us to populate this map with even more of these cameras. And we're going to have a bunch all throughout here. Venice, Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, uh, Inglewood, all the way up into parts of Tampa Bay, Arcadia, you know, probably something near Lakeland. Uh, we're just going to cover it all, do whatever we can. We've got three of these weather stations right here. We're going to set three of these up. That'll give us real-time wind and pressure data. And then we're going to have 15 of the live cams. And then, of course, we will be streaming live from the vehicle uh, that we've got uh, from the dash cam uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, we have to sleep at some point. We'll do that tonight. But uh, that is what we do. That's how we fund it. That's how we source it. And if you would like to be a part of it, we give you something back with extraordinary um, nobody else in the world does it like this. It's uh, Other people have remote cams, even big TV networks do, but to the extent that we do this, there's nobody else like it. You know, And I can brag about that because it's true, and I'm very, very proud of it. And if you'd like to be a part of it, again, get the Patreon app, patreon.com slash hurricane track, T-R-A-C-K, to go there directly. All right, let me get this online for you. Pack up our stuff here from the hotel in Naples and get out there and start setting up that equipment. Again, I am Mark Suddeth, Hurricane Track. Thanks for watching. Good luck in Florida. We'll see you from the live cam throughout the next few days.